Good morning, folks. Looking at a full sun view of the last 24 hours, combining base ionized helium underneath the pink hue of ionized iron in the corona. Let's get right to it at spaceweathernews.com. Looking at 193 angstroms, we see first that we still have no sunspots, but also that coronal hole we saw yesterday from stereo A is now in fact visible incoming on the south. It will face Earth directly in two days. Solar wind is relatively quiet. Solar wind speed in purple, dropping out even further to very low levels, and were it not for a phi angle shift up top in blue, which was the sun's electric current sheet hitting us last night, then we would have likely had a KP0 day. As it is, things are all quiet, but not too quiet. For those new here, despite solar flares, geomagnetic storms, proton radiation surges, etc., all having known ties to human health, nothing is more correlated than the KP0 day, which we almost just had. When cosmic rays surge, solar energy minimizes, and numerous cardiovascular and psychiatric indicators have been repeatedly shown to be tied to these highest energy particle bombardments from the cosmos. So folks, the typhoon death toll continues to rise, but there is another issue developing. Radiation samples stored near Fukushima have been flooded out, thousands of bags escaping into a local stream. The race to recover them is on. Wild weather swings continue, with record heat pounding Hawaii for days on end, and this is as the totals are still coming in from this winter-like storm in the continental states. We're going to quickly look ahead to tonight. The convergence storms running into the western nations of Europe should be noted this evening, especially in flood-prone areas. Up first in the science news, folks, there are two highly complex and high-detail studies of ionospheric response to space weather. The electrodynamic aspects of the interaction, both this and the second paper, are part of a push to deeper understand the particle-based interactions of Earth and geospace. This is ahead of the next IPCC release. Also in the climate realm, other scientists will now be going back to redo data on ocean temperatures after four Harvard professors slam our understanding of errors and long-term reconstructions and biases. This is the Mount Everest in the data error realm. Couple solar studies up next. First, an oops. The new model of the interplanetary magnetic field apparently is not able to do any better than the last one. One of the problems they are trying to explain is how the sun's magnetic fields are so darn strong so far away from it, like here at Earth. Well, it just so happens, an idea was published, same time, different journal, that would rectify that one problem I mentioned. We just don't see them. Seems kind of simple and obvious, but alas, these polar fields are how we predict earthquakes long term, and the mega quakes at that. Top right corner, quakewatch.net, find our 2015 paper which started it all. And there's quite a bit more as well. Wanted to quickly hit Mars, ESA showing what they're calling an ancient river. There are numerous gorgeous shots zoomed way in and way, way out. This is linked below. And also, if you happen to have 3D glasses, they put one of those images in the mix as well. Last but not least, another interconnectedness and plasma cosmology checkpoint as the linking of the heavens as part of a system continues to erase the long-standing concepts of a vast emptiness in space. These connections imply that normal physical forces we don't quite detect are in play, especially as we discover new luminous material like this. Plasma cosmology is our film that explains it all. It is linked below the video along with our climate and catastrophism films. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.